Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Pathfinder's second edition Age of Ashes AP campaign, the Elven Portal podcast. We are in season two, which means we are playing book two, The Cult of Cinders, and this is episode 14, 14 episodes in. And I can't say these guys have done a lot, but this adventure so far has been a lot about socializing, discovery, and very soon, exploration. So before we get to, I don't know if you guys remember, and I highly recommend if you're only listening to this on the audio podcast, we actually re-edited and added some very special, shall we say, 1970s music for the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes of the show, where Matt Witt playing Albert Stonechucker was trying some very unique diplomacy, shall we say, with uh, the chief and his best buddy to get them to play along. It's a long-winded episode, but if uh, with the new ambient music that we've placed in the re-release, uh, yeah, definitely worth a re-listen. So the scene comes down not to the morning after, but earlier that day when the heroes were first ascending the ropes to be brought up to the upper platforms. I'm going to bring up the image of the actual jungle elven city. Here we are. And Acrevel, as it is called, as you can see here, has three major platforms. And there was a short amount of time when everyone kind of split up. Do you remember when the goblin was kind of playing around with the lion that thought it was a jaguar and out of nowhere, our female elven ranger comes up from somewhere else, talks to him and moves on. I want to go back to that moment in time, just before where everyone gets up there and is comfortable and our elven ranger is actually met by some distinguished looking Yukiji elves and a cleric and is taken to a separate platform. She is introduced to the rulers of this city. They ask her three questions. Tell us about your companions. Who are you and where are you from? And what are your motivations here? Now, remembering that this elven ranger from a faraway distant land is not even a cousin to these fine folk, knows you guys and your motivations, your true motivations, very little but can speak kindly of how quickly you adopted her, um, thought that she should know about the elven portal and such, and perhaps cautions them to observe you further. So you did not meet the rulers of this treetop land, yet they watch you while you're mingling with their people. They observe you while you are dancing with their children and athletic experts. They giggle to themselves as you guys down hot pepper after hot pepper. And they continue to observe everything, Matt. <laughs> right up to a bunch of dwarves hitting on their chief of lore. And everyone passing out in a bunch of goblin grease and palm oil wine. I was just trying to be friendly. Mm. It is early the next day. You were uncertain how many hours of sleep you have had, but you certainly feel that it's not enough. Some proud UKJ warriors, armed with spears, but not heavily armed for war, poke at you guys and wake you. Can I have a society check, gentlemen? Those that are present. I would also like to call upon Mr. Joe Gibson tonight. Niles, you didn't really have much to do with this seduction scene. Uh, no. No. But knowing you, drinking <laughs> off in a corner. Okay, you're not far away. Okay. They gently roused their Spartacus. Remember that epic tale he retold? He stole Matt's yeah. thunder. Right? <clears throat> with, uh, with honors. You know, they wake you and, and uh, motion, you know, requesting. Please join us. What do we get, gentlemen? 
I got a natural 20 for 28. Ooh, smashed it. I got a 17 for a total of 19. Nice. Uh, I got an 11 for a total of non-natural 20. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, the society, from what you can glean from what's going on, is good news. They have sent you an honor guard. Now, I don't know if it's to guard you or to guard the person they're taking you to or the event they're taking you to, but this is not some kind of military coup. You're not about to be hung or put on trial. This is a an invitation just happens to be a military one you accept quickly dress bring out the last of the palm oil palm oil and palm wine from your skivvies and you are taken on a journey across the platforms from one to another that is not far off and as you are Poked and prodded. I mean, <clears throat> gently escorted. The scene pulls out from your miniaturized journey, and you, the breadth and width of this massive elven city can be seen, and it's going to take some time for you guys to get to your final destination. The scene comes down back at the ruins where one Miros Anvilbender, who is missing from our marching party, has required himself the elven portal key. Touching it to the stone, confidently, sucking in a breath, <clears throat> and dousing himself with as much water as he could steal or find upon his person, he pulls a soaking wet tarp from another bucket, throws it over his head, and throws himself into the portal. Time passes, and the scene comes back to our city where you believe you are in the audience of some people that must be important. The platform you are on is nothing any more special than what you've seen before, but the arrangement of the people here, the honor guard, um, the fact that a lot of people that you know are missing so they can't speak for you the friends you've made as a matter of fact two of your party members are missing now our elf didn't partake in last night's festivities so perhaps she is elsewhere or being treated differently Elbrick stone shucker you know of Miros's mission because the two of you discussed it earlier but I'm kind of saving its results so it's not like Miros is betraying the party. However, Al and Miros discussed something. Didn't bother telling anybody else in your drunken stupor. And at the height of just before passing out, the two cousins probably thought this was a great idea. <laughs> and of course, Al wakes up and you kind of foggily remember Miros volunteering to do something the two of you thought was a great idea. And painful clarity comes to you as you know the route he must, the deadly route that he must travel to fulfill his mission. Uh-oh. <laughs> no time to ponder that because you are brought before two elven ladies that are not sitting up high on a pedestal, but it's kind of obvious that uh, their position in this meeting makes them to be someone important. And I'm just pulling up the pictures here. Can you guys see these? Okay. Os Atsu. Os Pen. Looks like yep. the... Os Atsu and Os Penin. So Os is probably yeah, the like last the bug, name. The bug chick from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they've played around with the elven race of their eyes. If you look very closely, you can see an iris and a pupil, but they've decided to make the entire eye different shades of the same color. So these relatively young-looking twin sisters... Although they dress differently, their facial features and bright blue eyes are, you know, mark them as intelligent, youthful, beautiful, <clears throat> who knows, possibly wise. I guess you're going to have to get to know them. Let's meet the elven rulers. 
our elf is not here to translate. Does anyone present actually speak Elven? No. <laughs> no, and you don't want a dwarf to be trying to speak Elven. Ah, uh, I do. Oh. <laughs> do you? I. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I got two extra languages. I took Elvish and something else. <laughs> All right. So, um, they are, the stoic honor guard is silent. The, uh, sort of impromptu courtiers that are around elders and such, you know, are all mumbling amongst themselves quietly. They're not trying to be rude. They are just keeping their tones low as not to offend their comments or observations or questions that they may have about your party that is being presented to the two ladies. One of the honor guard come forward and tamps his spear and he introduces with a long winded elven title Os Atsu and points to the young woman in blue Os Anin and points to the twin sister in green. Albert just kind of looks at them and under his breath he goes, <laughs> looks like I was frightened with the wrong leaders. They introduce themselves in Elvish. Do you translate? Or do you actually tell these guys that you speak Elvin? No, I'm just going to start translating for them. Okay. Just casually, just... Oh, yeah, you know, so this is uh, Osa Atsu and Osa Penin. And just start translating. Okay. So I'm going to put what they say in the actual game chat. And I'd love to hear, like, just for the beginning. We won't make this painful, but um, yeah, I'd love to hear uh, what he says. Actually, you know what? It won't let me cut and paste. That will be painfully long. <laughs> we are Os Penin and Os Atsu of the Leopard Clan. Our mother is of the Heart Clan. Penin wears a patterned green dress and copper jewelry studded with uncut gems. Well, Os Atsu wears a dark blue tunic covered with amulets wrapped in copper and green cloth. Both twins wear black leather sandals decorated with copper amulets and have long hair arranged in thick locks. May I have a perception check from the party, please? Call him out as you get him. Don't be afraid to unmute. 26. 12. 29. Okay. Uh, Goblin, they're wearing cheap jewelry. It's copper. The other guy you met wore gold. The, these people are wearing jewelry. They must be important. You guys note that it's not the metal value of the copper or the gold making them more important. It's the fact that you guys have not met anybody wearing real metal jewelry. Like... Jesse had some gold on him and proudly said it marked his title. These ladies have quite a bit of copper on them. One has giant hoop copper earrings and those cylindrical copper clasps in her hair, as well as they both have large necklaces. One's made of pieces. The other one looks like the Egyptian sort of torque that goes right around her neck kind of thing. All solid copper and, and studded with actual gems, which are, of course, worth far more. This does not just denote them, you believe, as important people. Uh, but it does seem from your perception that perhaps society check. Uh, 19. Uh, 20. That only, you know, it, nine, that only, <laughs> that only important people wear metal as jewelry. There's metal on the elves, but it's usually weapons or armor or something or some kind of shoulder pad, not actual, like, flavorful jewelry stuck with gems. So important to note. Um, so, <clears throat> they tell you that um, your 
companion has foolishly gone back to the gate to whence you came. We did not know if you had planned this or not, but it is not our place to interfere with his actions. If he left, he seemed he wanted to go home. I don't know if this inconveniences you. We observed him. We did not stop him. And then they study you for your reaction. Like, did we do wrong? <laughs> Who are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you guys look around, you're, we're, you're missing, we're missing a, two. Yeah, you're missing an elf and a dwarf. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll turn back to them and be like, ah, uh, which one? The, the dwarf. <laughs> uh, the we're missing too. Oh, the dwarf with the mis- the dwarf that has transplanted all his head hair to his front. I'll just look back at the party. The dwarf. You know, vague recollection is the night before. Oh, he, he wouldn't have. Oh. Actually, he would have. Right. We may or may not be hearing from him again. <laughs> I sort of remember sending him home to bring a friend of ours back, a cousin. We'll see if he makes it. They nod. We suspected he might have done as such. To bolster your numbers, we hope that he brings allies. Also, if he traps you here by taking the key well <clears throat> they just kind of like raise an eyebrow at you like well I guess your fate is sealed right actually if you look at the girl in green she actually has that look on her face like the one eyebrows up like well <laughs> shit happens what are you gonna do right the other one looks far more cheerful with a smile so <clears throat> despite the one wearing robes and one wearing a tunic which you know you can get around in a little bit better shows the leg the ladies do look somewhat similar, though they do wear their hair slightly different. Um, they would like to hear, you know, an accounting of who you are, why you're here, you know, that type of thing. But it comes in the form of questions. They ask, like, you know, our, our people have told us about you and who you are and why you've come. And, you know, but they want you to affirm it in case you're pulling someone's leg or, you know someone decided not to tell them the whole story, they would like to hear it from you. As well as your decision, if you wish to be escorted back, or if you think you can help them. We also understand that Necktie, I mean Nikita, of the Leopard Clan, has personally imposed upon you to go forth into the jungle, into areas, they look at each other rather skeptically, where currently we cannot. Oi, oi. You've been hospital, hospitable to us so far. So I figure it's only fair for us to be hospitable back. Very well. Your elven companion has requested a short reprieve to run a personal errand but does wish to rejoin your party and does speak and she says does not speak necessarily ill of you we understand that some of your companions have not traveled together for long and they look at the goblin and they're implying the elf obviously So, Master Dwarf, do you speak for all? Young Cleric of, and she actually says the name of your god far better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> she see it is. Yeah. And, 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 she, and she perks up with sort of interest and a little respect, you know. Anyway, they don't ask who leads the party. She just wants to make sure that you guys are on the same page and like, you know, no one's going to go, well, he doesn't speak for me. I want to cut a side deal or no, you know. No, it's true. I don't speak for all. So, uh, perhaps give us a minute. We'll have a little powwow. Yep. Okay. Huddle up, huddle up. 
some ale. <laughs> <laughs> Niles just goes over to some guy that had like guarding a keg. Thank you, my good man, Scoop. Okay, we, we need this. Well, they wanted to hear a tale. <laughs> oh no, no, like that. They, they, hear a tale. <laughs> they, no, I'm. Have a drink. They've asked to recount, and then you guys have, yeah. you know, type of thing. Now they're asking about, like, you know, are we? Are you guys one people of one mind? You know, that kind of thing. We are one party. So you guys huddle up. Anything you want to discuss privately? No. Yeah. Any, yeah <laughs> any, any, anybody have any objections? No. No. <laughs> Do they understand common? Maybe. Well, so they hear us? Mean, maybe. Do they understand dwarven though? <laughs> or whispering? <laughs> but no, that's dwarven style. Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, no, uh, so yeah, I think we're all of okay. in agreement. Yeah. They do have some more questions for you. Now that you're of the same mind, they seem very interested in you personally. They'll ask you questions about your friends. Who, you know, who waits on the other side of the portal? What kind of allies do you have? Who are your friends? Are you, are you guys all friends together? It interests them to see such an eclectic mix of races. It's not un I'll, unusual to see like a couple of this or that thrown yeah. in with a mainstay, but you guys are literally like one dwarf, one man, one goblin, and one monk. Because I don't yeah, think I'll tell them of Breach Hill and how it's a you know mixed town and everyone's welcome. We this whole adventure of ours started answering the call for heroes there. I'll go into great detail about our up and coming brewery and ask if <laughs> they'd be interested in forging trade. Yeah, okay. Golden challenge through, through the portal. <laughs> okay. They ask of your occupation, young cleric. And, you know, obviously you guys are brewers. <laughs> Sampler. <laughs> <laughs> he's, our, he's your test market, right? We're going <laughs> to sell the humans. No one knows booze better than this. That's actually not a bad idea. It's like, who no knows? No, so it's genius. <laughs> he's the best in ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a cleric for the alcoholic god? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's just like you guys were joking about that, but it occurs to me like you could sell whiskey or whatever to like Joe Bob, but like a human that's devoted to a god of drinking knows booze. So he'll tell you people like this, people won't like that because he's got a human Good. value. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, something, that, yep. something that you and Miros might be very proud of might be a little bit too delicate or too strong for the human palate, right? This is true. He has like an eyelid system. If one eyelid like twitches and slowly closes, it's like, but he doesn't pass out. You're good. Something like this. <laughs> Both eyes close. Okay. We're going to double yeah. the price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt giving a thumbs up and just smiling and slowly falling over sideways for our podcasting audience. That's a good one. Um, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, something else they have a question for each of you is what do you consider? important besides my god <laughs> sure or is there is no i'll say there is no <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's just 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 the god and the drink okay yep there is no war in bossing say no because it's you know like also a god of freedom right no slaves uh, no ah right? god of communities oh. right. they do de they definitely seem interested and there's some not from the ladies, but around the crowd. You mentioned like freedom, slaves, you know. He pulls out the blue paint, does half of his face. We're good to go. <laughs> freedom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they do seem to like that answer. Let's hear from our goblin, Lobrak. Up until this point, I mean, the story, the tale of this party has been a given. What are your responses to, like, you can avoid the questions if you wish, but what are your responses to family, occupation, and what you consider important? No family. I'm exiled from a clan, so that's kind of my occupation as a wanderer. Are you a mercenary? Is your occupation exiled criminal? What did you do? Uh, it was, just, uh, it was combat for the leader. So, loser gets exiled if they aren't slaughtered. Okay. So, uh, you are considered a champion among your people, but you were bested in combat by the best who is now the leader of your clan is this correct uh it was more of we needed a new leader because the old one fell off a cliff and my friends kind of just pushed me into volunteering so 
Yeah. So you They're assholes you, and you, dead now. You you succumb to peer pressure and after losing the battle it makes you they look at each other. They're not sure of the word. They 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 don't have the goblin tongue but they do try their their hand at common making you a number 2. Shaking their heads the the, the implications are are there. Eh, that was a couple of years ago. And changed a bit. What's important to you now? Read them. I'm allowed to be myself. Anyone tries and judges me, I just walk away. Are you a pacifist? No. We heard of your contribution in the Great Hunt. Akosa witnessed your deeds of how your elf, Lady Elf Ranger, hunted alongside you, and the two of you flushed out great game, and you succeeded in the killing blow. And they nod towards your skull, which is, you know, he's been using for everything, right? <laughs> I'm good at hunting. When you actually... When you're on your own, like normally in a goblin pack, you just kind of surround things and just, <laughs> ah! And that's how you eat. When you're by yourself, you kind of got to think. So, uh. okay. Well, uh, you know, like, you don't deny the, um, the story, and you don't exactly like, oh, yeah, I'm the best type of thing. You just kind of, it's a, a fact of nature, right? You want to eat, you want to hunt? I would say they're overly impressed, but they do seem to respect your words. And again, you get a lot of nodding around the circle going, yeah, okay, yeah. Perhaps. You know, plus the fact that I also speak Elvish. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that um, also is, like I said, a, a nod in your favor. Can I, is there any, hmm, like there's not a, lingu they've taken linguistics out of this game, haven't they, Joe? There's no rolling for Elvish, you just speak it, right? He just happens to have a goblin accent, but they can understand him clearly enough. There's no failing the critical check and reversing a meaning as much as... No, no, if you have language, then you speak it. Yeah, or yeah. Understand it. Yeah. And, and like I said... But if you don't have it, then you're me, you should have it like... No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but for flavor, like I said, you could still, like, they understand you perfectly well. Even if your goblin accent is thick, you know, they do get your, yeah. they do get the important part is they understand what you're saying and what your intent is. Um, all right. So. They are young. And it's betrayed now as they're a little bit curious about your skill. What type of skill? <laughs> Bedroom skills? Like, Hunt no. What are we talking here? <laughs> Hunting, <laughs> diplomacy. Is there any skill that you are particularly proud of? Something that we have not observed. For, for instance, um, Atsu in blue with the tunic, you know, can, can move around, legs are free, gets up from where she's sitting, goes to the side, and is handed a clay disc. And she starts sort of nimbly spinning it in the air and catching it like a small frisbee. Holds it up to you. Like a target. And she motions as if she just toss it off the end, you know, like, pull, bang, you know, waving it around like, if I threw this, would you be able to hit it? That sort of skill. Prowess in combat. Or perhaps a talent we've not yet seen. Albrecht just nods to her. Throw it. Okay. A wide smile comes from Atsu in blue. And without hesitation, and very deftly, like the words barely leave your mouth, and she winds back and chucks it. You know what I'm going to do, right? I know, but it's like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> Spit out the words. Hands come right. out. <laughs> oh shit. Forming the ancient figure in front of me. Okay. Yep, hands come up. Hands come up. Sleeves go flipping back. Several bolts of energy go flying from his fingertips. Okay, what do you cast? Magic missile. Okay. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. But, you know, because it was a little hungover from the night before, he kind of stumbles backwards a bit as each one of the bolts fires out. He's like, whoa. <laughs> okay. 
Magic Missile. So you pop off the spell Magic Missile. Yep. A commonly worldwide spell known to never miss its target. The clay pigeon shatters before it begins its arc and descent. Atsu turns to you and frowns. She doesn't say, to... doesn't call you on cheating, <laughs> but it seems like you use magic. She was looking for some martial skill, obvious. You know, not going to say they know the spell or not, but it's, you know. Her face tells you she's just kind of like not impressed that you're cheating. <laughs> 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 the spell that never misses, right? But she doesn't call you on it. Doesn't say, "Oh, you're uh, magic, blah blah blah." She just doesn't seem very happy that you did that. It was funny though. Mm. <laughs> uh, fair. Anyway, um, there's sort of silence to see if they judge or whatever. They're like the crowd goes silent, and the other twin perks up and says, "Perhaps." another skill one of the mind she says kind of prickling up one finger towards her eyebrow looking around at you guys do you guys have a skill that you could do a check in to demonstrate that you're particularly proud of yeah, if somebody's wounded <laughs> sure just walked up to somebody and stabs yeah, them just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. did somebody say stab yeah Dog slicer's already out. Yeah. So you're like, hmm, if somebody's wounded, says Niles, right? The goblin is like tracing a big line down your thigh, dude, going for the artery. Smile, you know, two thumbs, he's helping. So before you start bleeding out, you think I'm joking. What do you want to do? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll... I'm sure there must be somebody in the crowd that he's skilled, oh, dude. Like he's so skilled, oh, you don't even, you don't even feel the pain. Like <laughs> he's done the blood. You know, there's that thin red line that forms, and then, you know, you're like you just don't even feel it. He's so skilled with that chopper, man. You're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. fair enough. Then I'll do a medicine check on myself. Okay. So they, they do see like how nasty the wound is and how it starts to like seriously bleed, bleed and almost start pumping, you know. And Niles reaches into it, <laughs> reaches into his bag, does a healing check, pulls out something they haven't seen, a different type of wrapping or gauze, you know, that type of thing. Uh, a fabric from the north that they've not seen, right? I mean, they know what wrappings are, but they probably use different material. You know, he pulls out his, his own Western style of bandages, yada, 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 goes to town on his leg, you know. And the entire time, he moves so fast. Let's have the roll. So uh, I'll, I'll use my skill assurance. Yep. So that's a 19. Okay. <laughs> so. They are impressed beating the DC that is in the book of 17. His hands moving so quickly as if he had three. Like alcohol in the wound, two hands start wrapping. One hand comes up and gives him a swig of said, you know, disinfectant. And <laughs> right? And done. And he's got this beautifully dressed wound, little bow. Right? Yep. And not only does he have, you know, like he's tilting the flask, like refill, please. Right? You look over the goblin and he's bandaged his head to make him blind. And the goblin's like, what? <laughs> he's quickly wrapped the goblin's head, like, you know, with some extra gauze blinding him for a moment. Like, eh, what? What? <laughs> what happened? It went dark. Lost it. <laughs> they smile, especially the one in green, and they nod. Can I have an actual attack roll? Because Aiden, you too just demonstrated a skill. Moving swiftly, drawing the blade. Like you said, blades out, dudes chopped, a nice surgical, you know. Goblin doctor to your, you know. Yeah. Uh, 13. Okay. So without any, um, uh, what do you call it? Without any ash or whatever he just you just quickly strike out Boom. you know it's so quick that your speed does the work as opposed to precision right yeah there's that anime thin line and all of a sudden of blood <laughs> <laughs> steps takes one step back because it you know sprayed where he would have been standing okay so not overly impressed with that um so 
they um, they now ask about perhaps a friendly competition since Niles has impressed them. All right. Okay. If you would like to test your skill at combat, Atsu comes forward and she invites you, any PC, to strike her. Okay. <laughs> she likes it rough, does she? <laughs> well, the, uh, you're, you're given, like, a wooden weapon or a stick or, like, hand-to-hand. -hand, you know, it's not supposed to be lethal, right? Okay. Or, I'll, I'll do or it. it's a given that it's like, here, horse chopper, but they're, they're assuming he's going to spin the blade flat and smack her and go, hey, gotcha, you know, that kind of thing. Because, like, okay, bitch, disembowel. <laughs> I am your new king. Yeah, that's not going to go over very well. <laughs> I don't have to ask for society checks there, guys. That's That happens in every society, right? It's like the extra skill required is like, ooh, how do I fight the queens without hurting them? Right? Okay. So, striking a rather difficult AC. Sure. Okay. Also, not so fast, sister, says Pandan, right? Um, she offers you to match any skill that you guys can muster that's a common skill. So something that is, you know, widely known. Be it stealth or climbing or, you know, something more mental than physical, obviously. Uh, stealth. Okay. That or acrobatics. Okay. Let's go with stealth. Intimidation. <laughs> Ye old staring contest. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, you know oh, come what? On, Thanks come for on. inviting me, y'all. I had a great time. Come on, never call, coming on this podcast. Call, again. call it, call it. Come on, Aiden. What'd you do? Nat one for a fourteen. Okay. Oh, so he's like, okay, he's like, I'm gonna go hide over there. You won't be able to see me because you kind of get... And he disappears. Like, he, he causes distress. He does the whole thing. He Batmans. But because he basically pointed at, like, the side of the platform where he's going to vanish, they kind of know where he is. <laughs> anyway, the barrel and the tree, you know, starts rustling. As you can see, I'm completely... In, you know, it's like, okay, that doesn't really... Yeah. Or he walks over, rooting it. So, No. <laughs> Or like I said, uh, it, actually in this case, not to insult Aiden because one is terrible. What gets a critical fail is he, you know, what's that kind of thing and disappears, right? But then disturbs something or someone. There is that proverbial he knocks over a bucket or a barrel or you know. Well, like, I, I go away. I go over to the hiding spot yeah. and the cat's there. <laughs> he just freaks right out. Ah! 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 Yeah, it hisses, and so he can't help but like hiss back in his native tongue. Okay. Now we have Niles. Sure. Close thing we have to a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now it is yeah. anyway, so. All right. Okay. Swing away, eh? Yeah, let's have it. Sure. One second. I don't know. It's been a while. Oh, does a 26 hit her? Yes, because the AC is 25. So, <laughs> so you, what do you like? You pull out a rapier and just kind of do the, you yep. know, dub dub, you know. I'll just slap her across the face with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hit me. Yeah. Run. <laughs> no, no, uh, Neomorpheus, where you do the punch and show that you could have gotten them, but don't. Nope. nope. <laughs> okay. I don't, not damaging her, right? It's, it's, I'm not pokey pokey. I'm just slapping. Okay. <laughs> so you, you go into the dueling stance. And she no, just, just yeah, my, the drunken dueling stance. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah. She she goes into some form, formal elven combat, and your uh, was it way of the swaying hip? You know, just the unpredictable movement, which is classic for those fantasy styles, right? Can't quite yeah. predict your movements, and sure enough, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, there is a bit of foreplay. I mean, sorry, there is a bit of uh, you know back and forth. The woman is obviously highly skilled. But he does manage to land a hit on her. And they stop. And she smiles. Gives you a little bow. And extends you her hand. Like a warrior. Oh, hopefully this is a... 
a handshake and not me being thrown, but yeah, I'll <laughs> extend the, the hand to grab the forearm. Okay. <laughs> Actually, can I have a society check? You can under you can figure out what it is and how to respond properly. I've been around Miros long enough. <laughs> well, he claims to be a cultural expert, but you know, <laughs> kind of a make it up as he goes and see. <laughs> Uh, society of 20. Yeah. There is a bit of a nuance. Um, what you're supposed to do in this particular case isn't just like pull the hand back and do the big warrior slap. You're to put your palm beside hers. It's a gesture of we have no weapon. And then oh, go for the arm. Just something subtle, you know, for flavor that you like, you know, you put in there. Fair enough. It's like your Elven Ranger showed you guys this. It's like, I hope this, you know, I hope this is international. I hope this is right. <laughs> I hope it's international, right? Yeah. Anyway. A teethy smile, give you the big handshake. So. Oh, we are Elven champions. Yes. <laughs> um, they are, seem to be pleased. They sit, they talk with you guys some more. And more drink. Yeah. <laughs> While you wait for the return of perhaps the elf or Miros. Right? More drink, some back and forth, some politics. They talk about the area. They tell you of how, as Nikita said, for some strange reason, some sort of curse or magic, foul magic has been used that if they travel too far towards where they believe the cultists are hiding, they just go blind. Our warriors and scouts describe it as if all they can see in front of them is a great blackish crowd, cloud of gray burning ash. And they are struck blind. If they retreat, the effect recedes, and they are fine. So we believe it is something to do with an area, not targeting us individually. And yet, it does seem to be meant to afflict our people. So, the first thing we would like to know, if you wish to go forth into the jungle, like Nikita says you are willing to, to tell us if it affects your numbers. If you do not return, we'll assume that you're successful in crossing the barrier or, or dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the two of them at this point start like, you know, finishing each other's sentences, right? We assume you've crossed the barrier successful, says the one in blue. Or dead, says the one in green, you know. You have strike my sister. The one in green says disappointingly. And the one smile, the one in the blue smile says, he, he shows great promise and skill. She claps her hands. I can be the new king. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. A couple, <laughs> couple more dates there, Niall. Slow your roll. Um, yeah, like in 50 years, perhaps, right? Oh, I don't live that long. Old man, where is the young proud warrior? <laughs> I have returned to win your hand, great princess. What? Um, she claps her hands, and on a sort of big palm leaf they present Niles, the winner of the contest with an iron dagger Ooh. they tell you it is magical, it strikes true and is made of cold iron we believe that this may aid you in your quest fair enough, thank you hey, I take it Perhaps it will serve you well. Nikita comes forward and explains that she too has gifts for the party. Retells the queens. You kind of get the idea that this is for show. They nod politely, but you probably, they're spies and scouts and people of like, you know, they've been watching you and you know, they probably know everything, but formally Nikita tells them some things that she witnessed of you guys, your feats, your daring, your politeness, your drinking, like all this kind of stuff and how she's, imp how she personally has been impressed upon by you guys, by Miros, his candor, by your willingness to serve people that you don't need to world apart, you know, th this sort of smattering. And she herself, as the clan storyteller has, because of her position, has ordered supplies for you guys. And because 
you have, remember we talked about the IP system? Influence points. One gets you a pup yep. tent. Five gets you a bunch of stuff. Ten gets you a whole bunch of stuff type of thing. You guys got between a total of five and ten influence points during all the encounters and trials. And you are rewarded by said system by getting some extra gear and cool stuff. Ooh, because free stuff. the module, the adventure, like, it's a bit meta of me, forgive me, but the module uh, acknowledges that there's a lot of diplomacy and stuff up front instead of just action. And they don't want you to go in there blind. So, you know, making a good impression and, and you still got to make skill checks and stuff to like pull a bunch of stuff off does get you a certain amount of, you know, XP and impressing and such. So, um, you guys do impress at least one of the rulers with, with a decent, you know, success, but there was no crit scores, I believe. You got really good with a 16 attack of plus 10 for a 26 to like hit her, but I don't think anyone knocked the actual skills out of the park. No, failed all, critically failed a lot of them. <laughs> uh, but you know what? There's worse. Like if you guys just refuse to show off your skills, or whatever, that could actually cost you points. So like this does. It's not just a matter of how much you gain, how slowly. Screwing some stuff up, like taking the chance, can risk those points. So that hence is the XP reward and such. However. Since you guys have, at least one of you, you know, succeeded with uh, doing your skills, okay, each of, P uh, each of you PCs now gain 60 XP, bringing you up to a grand total of 380, I believe, from your 320. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. Getting so close. Creeping along. Creeping. <laughs> Every little bit helps, right? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. So, as I was saying, Nikita brings parting gifts for you to prepare. Now, again, you guys have woke up, you're hungover, you're down a couple party members. They're not going shove off this morning. You guys are obviously allowed a day or so to rest, get your stuff together. But they want you familiar with this gear. So, on behalf of the Leopard Clan and the influence points you have gained, okay, they present you with two pup tents, five full water skins, four weeks worth of rations, mosquito netting, a set of healers tools, which I believe have like a certain amount of expenditure, right? Yeah. So that's very handy. Six vials of lesser anti-plague, three Ooh. lesser elixirs of life, Ooh. five vine arrows, Give those to the ranger. They <laughs> quietly explain to Niles that the dagger you were given is a plus one striking cold iron dagger. Ooh. And because you guys influence them decently, they also add six more vials of lesser anti-plague, four lesser potions of healing, mm. and five more vine arrows. Sweet. That's all right. And then we carry stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need murals back. He carries everything. <laughs> and then she brings out personal gifts. You know, for you, Scarecrow, going towards <laughs> Elbrick, right? Brains. Handing you an item completely wrapped up in palm leaves. Yeah. You know, open it later. Big nudge. Wink, wink. Okay. For you. Oh, ye shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. For you, a little tear wells uh, up in his eye. For you, Tin Man, they come to Niles with an item. And for you, Cowardly Goblin, I mean Cowardly Liar, <laughs> they bring. What are you Mulbrek. talking about? The coward? <laughs> they also hold up another dagger like Niles and basically say, hold this for your companion when he returns through the portal. They know Miros. He participated. He comes back. He gets a dagger. Cool. Or, you know, whoever comes back. Maybe he'll send people. So, you guys dig in. Want to open all your toys now? Or, <laughs> you know, they leave you alone. <laughs> they dismiss you from the audience chamber. 
you know, you guys go on your way, you go back to your original platform. Go nurse our hangovers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do all that. I'll open it. One, yeah. I'll for sure open it up. <laughs> okay. Let's, you know, oh, yeah. Open up the palm. What's, what's in here? Yeah. So, you know. Oh, oh yeah, I open it. Oh, they... Rustle, rustle, rustle. Flip it open. Okay. Dash. How could they have known? This is exactly what I wanted. They present you with a wand of widening. Next, we have. Uh, next, we have Niles. <laughs> look what I have! Beautiful. A ancient, perhaps I don't know, a river pirate. Like where would they get? Well, there is trade, and there are you know like years of elves sitting on items from ancestors that have come through, tried their luck at the gold in the jungle, and failed. You hold in your hands a plus one disrupting rapier, I believe. And it has striking on it for good measure. A plus one striking disrupting rapier. Hey, he is Spartacus, Ooh, remember? Ah. <laughs> He's doing all the work <laughs> for you guys, right? I mean, they have a half-elf, so obviously they like humans. Niles, and, Niles for the win so far. Okay. Last but not least, our goblin is presented with a small care package. It the, It's one of those double gifts, okay? The top, you know, is a little bit of camo paint that he could use because of his natural green, a little black or whatever to, like, you know, help him blend and some breath mints. Don't read too much into it. And not a six-level item, but lower level items, but they don't know you so well. But they give you, like, practically magical, if such a thing as possible, the Infiltrator's Thieves' Kit tools. As well as an awesome snare kit to help you in your hunting prowess and breaking and entering endeavors. I don't think there's any locks in the jungle, but somehow they know. They've always known. And as you guys ooh and ah of your Christmas presents, the scene rises once again, moves over, and falls back over that ancient temple where the portal, cue somebody, flares up and coming flying through a dwarf covered in a wet tarp, which is now completely evaporated on fire and kind of doing that crimson edge burn away. And as it falls to pieces, probably saving the man's life, it's not Miros that stands there sputtering, cursing, and patting the flames on himself. But another dwarf that says, Blasted old fool, he should have told me there was a dragon in that bloody hole. Now I don't know uh, where what the town's going to say about old Stepan Oakhart. Welcome to the podcast in a cameo. You know him as your favorite half-orc with overbearing descriptions of his flaming maul, swinging and crushing walls to bring down his foes. Welcome Matthew Spiegler, my co-worker, to the podcast. Hello. What's going on, everyone? Starring in our first level Monster Interrupted, the Absolation, uh, Abomination Vaults podcast that has been slightly put on hiatus, but we're going to be back to it another week. And everyone, including fans, were so impressed by his performance, we've invited him to do a higher level cameo with a certain Dwarven fighter, where our certain cousin Theoen, our resident fighter, is still on hiatus, but will return. Welcome, Matthew Spiegler, to the cast. Matt, would you please describe, head to toe, your dwarf, his disposition, what he is, and uh, I notice you have a slight Scottish, but not a heavy Scottish. Are you a cousin? I am definitely a cousin. Okay. Um, my accent, it, it shines through on some words, but it's mostly gone from the amount of traveling I've spent away from the hold oh yeah you don't you don't do five levels easy like these guys are a bunch of neophons that spent like first level they come down like to, to them you were like fifth level when they came down the mountain at first you know they're probably gonna be really happy to see you because what are you playing i'm playing a dwarven fighter uh i'll be using a two-handed maul and i've got like a archer archetype so you got, you got the, the a... ranger archetype thrown in there a little tracking and all yeah ranger oh yeah so I eventually want to have like a crossbow, but right now I think I've just got a a regular short bow. Okay. What kind of armor do you wear? Um, that is up to debate, I think, still. 
<laughs> it's buying all that stuff. We did pull him out of thin air. We're like, hey, can you come in and make a cameo at the end yeah. of this episode, right? Don't worry, we'll have him ready for. for I think time. I think Joe made it was talking about having how much money and full plate would have been within that budget. So I was we hoping full plate. Flashback to a couple months ago, um, uh, where we tried to do a masked up six foot distance game at Troy's house. Also in monster, uh, interrupted. He plays our little goblin, witch. um, and we had a couple of coworkers, you, we had Martin and we had Megan and we played some mummy's mask and you guys did a great job, like such a good job. I had such fun. I actually invited all four of them to audition for spots in the podcast to politely decline because they're just way too busy. And, uh, Spiegler here, Matthew Spiegler and Troy were down to give it a go. So we skewed them up in our brand new show and, uh, Spiegler here has become quickly become a fan favorite. So we've asked him to, to join this show for a while. And with a little help from our master, Joe Gibson of slapping together a fifth level guy. Cause you remember he's a little new to the game. We have a brand new cousin emerging to help them explore the depths because if you can't trust an elven ranger you got to have a little bit of ranger in one of your dwarven cousins to come along yeah i i picture he's got like uh like you can't really see his armor because he's got sort of like a robe with a hood over top of it um the camp, that the, kind the of camel cape the the ring the, yeah the, the, it uh, kind of cascades over top of everything he's wearing it's almost like the the hunter's poncho a little bit of yeah, keep, like a yeah, hunter's poncho. The, the the rain resistant, but it has like the, the the static color of you know. In the right light, you can't see my eyes, just my beard, my <laughs> white beard. The beard sticking out of the poncho. Not a dwarf, not a dwarf. It's coming for you, right? I've got the uh, I've got like the two braids at like the tip on the of the beard on each side. There you go. You'll do well next to our goblin. It just like jumps into a pile of leaves, and then the leaves begin to move like a sea monster, and, and it, something dies. You know. <laughs> you fit right in and i'm bald you're bald okay got the hood yeah. got, the, got the white beard um got the giant maul and what do you got for a backup weapon you talked about getting your hands on a sweet sweet crossbow in the future but uh have you got any like sh sword shield I backup? The, no i got the regular clan dagger and oh uh, yes let's talk about your clan name and symbol so i've got a clan dagger that has a giant uh, old oak tree with uh, big leaves on top, a big like uh, the bowing branches. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, it's kind of like shaping around a anatomically anatomically correct heart in the center with a golden sun behind the the heart. Oh, like an actual dwarven heart. Yeah, like with veins, like not, <laughs> not just like a, a silly like draw your girlfriend a heart. No, like, like, like yeah, like the, the the round fist with the vein and everything bolts and yeah. Yeah, the, the maybe a little bit of blood dripping off and, the bottom And what did you it. say your clan name was? Oakheart. Oakheart, okay, yeah, makes sense. Very yeah, nice. it's an oak tree. Gotcha, gotcha. And he heads off in a random direction from the ruins and is immediately met by a circle of dark-skinned elves and their bows. A warrior with a spear comes forth and greets you in common he wears gold on his person he introduces himself as jesse is proud that he speaks the common tongue claims his daughter taught him and says your brethren are the guests of our city you are welcome here well jesse i can tell you speak very good basic congratulations uh, can you take me to my cousins? Okay. My brethren. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Could I have that again? <laughs> he says in perfect comment. <laughs> we have a running joke hey, that dwarves go, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm going to like you, Jesse. Me and you should have a drink sometime, buddy. It's, he nods, right? And the two of them part in the bush. And the last thing you hear before the episode ends is it's it's Jesse. Decide. You're like, you're like, yeah, I know. Jesse. Yeah, no, it's just that. You know, yeah, they, they keep arguing over his name. And we will see you next time on the Patchwork Cast. I mean, the Elven Portal Podcast, not Porncast Podcast. Say goodnight, Mr. Oakheart. Good night, everyone.